I bet you're itching to use pop-ups on a Bricks Builder website. Well, now with version 1.6, which is a beta version, you can do that. Like I just said, you do need the beta version of 1.6. It's not going to work with the current version of Bricks, which is 1.5.7. But if you can get hold of this, let's go and have a look at it. Once it's installed, we're good to go on a fake page that we've got here with a basic section container. We've got a heading, basic text in the button. What we're going to do is create a pop-up which can either be activated by coming onto the page. So, you know, when the page loads up, the pop-up appears and also activate it by clicking on a button as well. Now to do this, what you really need to be doing is creating a template. Now you can go over here to your page and create a template from scratch, or you could go over back into WordPress, go over to bricks, go over to templates and then create a brand new template here. Either way, it's the same kind of process. I'm just going to create one here. We're going to call it new pop-up and then I'm going to select pop-up from the template type and hit publish. It's important you do that. I mean, by the way, though, if you don't select it, when you do hit edit with bricks, you will get a little uh, of a prompt saying, well, what is this, a header or a footer? But it's always good to do it from the get go so you don't confuse yourself. Now, what you get is this little pane open up whereby you have a background overlay and whatever you build in your pop up will now sit within here. Don't worry, you can make it full page if you want or how big you want it. But what you now have is this facility. And if I go over to the settings at the top, and then go to template settings. Now we can start to modify how this pop-up looks. I just want to go back a step. Right now, there is nothing here on the left-hand side that you can use other than building the content that's going to sit inside your pop-up. So you might have another button which maybe activates another pop-up after the first pop-up. Or you might have a coupon code or a link to a secret product like buy these special trainers or something like that. But that's good, all good and well. But what we want to first do is actually affect uh, how the pop-up works. So if I go over to settings, go to template settings, we then click the option called pop-up, okay? Now in the pop-up over here, this is where you will have settings for the background overlay. It's very easy to come here and sort of go, okay, pop-up padding, and you think it's touching this. It's not. It's actually touching the background. What I will, however, do is touch the background. So I could go in now and pick one of the colors from my palette. I mean, I could just go for an all black color like that. I could then affect the transparency a little bit. I mean, to be honest, it already has a pretty decent transparent color over there. So I'm going to get rid of that color scheme there. However, you have the facility to modify this. But another thing you could also do is select an image. So maybe you want to have, um, let's just say this image here in the background. And then we have all of the things that you should be used to. Again, look, I could put a background, but this time now, this will actually be inside of here within the content. Again, nothing is applying at the moment because we don't have anything in here at the moment. What I mean by that is we don't have a sectional container, okay? So let's go and add something in, and then we're gonna come back on to all of these other settings where we have pop-up limits and interactions like that. Now we could use uh, just drop in a section container. Let me get rid of that. Or we could use one of these pre-built ones. Either way, you're going to get the same kind of thing. What we're now going to do is drop in a heading into here and we might as well get some text as well. I mean, you could drop in another button if you want. You know, you could build it however you want, to be honest. Right. Now, before we do anything else over here, I'm going to go back over to the template settings now over here and go back into the pop-up. Now we've got something to work with. Now, in terms of the content, you will notice that this is quite stretched out. I want this to only be like a, a boxed width of 500. You don't want to be setting your widths in the sectional container because it will not affect the width of this pop-up. What you want to do is go up to your, go into your pop-up settings, go down to the content tab, and down here, I am going to set the width to be, I was going to say 300 and 500. Something like that for now, okay? And what I'm also going to do is set the background color for this to now be uh, this yellow. Um, you can also add in a bit of border as well, which I've already done, um, uh, which I'll show you what I did. All I did was set the white to 5, the blur to 10, and the spread to 5 as a black color. However, the black color is a little bit transparent, so it's not a full-on black, and that just adds in a little bit of an effect going on down there. Now, the other settings you have in here, pop-up limit, how many times is this going to load on the page? So per page load, yet yeah, I'm going to leave that per session. So do you want it to load 20 times per session? Probably not a good idea, but it is there for you. The key one, though, is the interaction. 
Don't assume that because you've created a pop-up template, it is automatically a pop-up. It needs a few more details, triggers, and things like that. So let's, let's hit the add um, interaction. The trigger for this, it's not going to be a click or a hover. It's going to be when the page loads. So when the page loads, I want this to appear. There will be no delay, and the trigger for this will be show element. Your pop-up is an element. So we're going to say show the element. Well, what is it? Uh, it's a pop-up. And now we're going to tell it which pop-up, which is the new pop-up. So if you've got 20 pop-ups, go and pick the one you want. I'm just going to hit save for a moment. Let's now just go back over to our container now where we've added in some content. I'm going to center align the items in there at the moment. I am also going to make the container be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go over to my style and my layout, 200 pixels in height. In fact, just put 2px there. I'm also going to go back to my content and I'm now going to just center that over there. So look, you, there's stuff you can do, okay? You know, there, there's a lot of things you can do with the layout and how you want to do it. You are back into Flexbox container territory. You could have another container within there. You could drop an accordion into there. You can do what you want. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to modify the content, but I just want to show you how things work, okay? Um, what we will do, though, is add in an icon for the close button because you'll notice there is no close button at the moment. Nine times out of ten, you can just click on an overlay and it will close for you, but let's add that in. So we're going to go over here and I'm now going to go and pick up an icon like this and I'm just going to drop it in above our header over there. When we click on the icon, there is a new feature that is now available called interactions. In fact, if I go to header, it was there as well and it's on the basic text as well, but it's more poignant or makes more sense if I tell you about it on this particular part. I'm going to change this icon to be a close button. Funnily enough though, if you type in cross, it's not going to pop up. So if you type in close, it is there. So if you can't find it, just find, just basically type in the word close and you'll get it. Or you could go for a search through all of the other libraries we have here. I still feel like I would prefer it if it was just one library rather than you having to go in individual. Right, let's go over here now and let's start setting the size. I'm going to go down to typography. Um, and just for the basis of this tutorial, I'm just going to set it up to be 30 pixels like that. Now, in terms of positioning, I don't want it to be there. I want it to be in the right corner. Now, I would be going down over to position and I would say make this be absolute. And then using the options down here, you could start to adjust it. However, I just want to point out, look, if I hit zero there, look where it ends up. And this can get a little bit tricky. This always works really well when you know that um, you've got a full whip section, but when you're doing it within, you've got to be a little bit careful. I'm going to undo that and instead I'm going to move the icon to sit outside of the container. So now it sits up there and this is where you might now want to adjust uh, the height or the padding or anything you've done to the container. Because we are now up into sec section level in a way, I could just go to the icon go down here and align it to like that. So I'm on the icon right now. I've hit align self to the end for the icon. If I hadn't done that option, I could have gone to my section instead, gone to the content and said, okay, uh, move everything to the end. So you have multiple options for how you can do it. I think the safer way to do it, in my opinion, is just go to the actual icon, go down to where you have, uh, where is it, flex there, and just stick it on the end like that. I feel like that's better. Because otherwise, if I now drop in anything else, I don't want everything to be over to the end because I might have a little word over here. I mean, you could, if you want, put another heading in, right? So if I just go and uh, duplicate this heading here and I now pop this up like that, of course, right now you're going, whoa, what's going on here? This looks really crazy. No, don't worry. I'm going to go to my section. I'm going to set it to be a row, set this up to be a wrap like that. This is now what happens. And then I'm going to go over to my section again and I'm going to say space between like that. So I could have a heading and an icon. So I might have some words up here which says, hi, I'm a pop-up, right? But the reason why we're doing all this, sorry to digress, is that icon is going to be our close button. So let's make it into a damn close button. What we're going to do is hit the interactions button up here. And now it's going to say, well, create the interaction. Yeah, OK, let's click add. And now we're back in the similar territory as we were for when we were setting up the pop-up. What is the trigger? Well, this one is going to be a click. Don't do mouse over because you can imagine every pop-up closing on mouse over. The action for this will be hide element. Again, remember, you're probably looking for the word close. No, it's hide element. And what we're going to be hiding is the pop-up and the pop-up is this one. So the pop-up loads on content load when the content loads up. 
but for the close button we want it to close like this and you can add further ones as well let's now just go and save that so in effect that should load up on our page however we have not set it to the exact page yet don't just do this and walk off and go yeah i've done it you've got to now activate on which pages it goes to just like every other template you work on you've got to go to settings go to template settings go to conditions and this is normally where in your header or your footer you would have said is this going to be the entire website the front page whereabouts is it let's just go for the entire website for now and let's just hit save there you go there's the pop-up it appears pretty instantly now if i hit anywhere on here nothing's going to happen if i put my mouse over here that now closes but you might have noticed something we didn't get the finger option appear and this is something that i did pick up from the videos that bricks have already done and by the way great work by thomas for doing this we have the arrow or the cursor appear and really it would be better if we had the finger and also this close button isn't really doing much there's just the close button we can add some animation to that as well so let's go back over to our pop-up over here you might need to click the interaction to be able to see the styling features again when we go to layout and scroll down there is now a new feature called cursor this is in the miscellaneous section I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select pointer. So what will happen is when you move your mouse over it, you will now get the pointer. So that is done there. But what we need to do now is set up another interaction. So we're going to hit plus there and we have another interaction. Now, this one here is going to be what happens when you actually put your mouse over it. So interaction one is the click to close the sec, which we know works. The second one, though, is the hover effect. So this is where we're now going to say start an animation. Um, and, and this is where you get to decide on what you want to go for. Bounce, I'm going to leave the duration to be normal. Um, and yeah, we'll leave it as normal. There will be no delay. In fact, I don't even need to do that. Leave it as normal. There'll be no delay and it is to the self. Does it run only once? No, we're going to leave that as it is and hit save. By the way, if you move your mouse over it now, it won't do anything. It's not until you're actually viewing it. You now move, you can see, I mean, that's probably a bit more of a bounce than you want. And there are other features and animations you could go for. But the bait idea is, is that you close it and it's gone. But what if you don't want this to load now every time you load a page and it's going to be activated via a button? Okay, remember how we set it up to appear on the page load. You've got to go to your template settings, go to your pop-up, scroll down. This is where all your pop-up settings are go to where it says content loaded. So I am going to completely get rid of that. And I refresh that page. There's no pop-up appearing. It's going to be enabled by this button. Okay, let's go over to our page. Let's click on the button, then click the interaction option that we have over here. Click the plus sign and you're going through the same motions that we did before. So we're going to say this is on a click. It's going to show elements. It's going to be a pop up and it's going to be the new pop up. If you want to enable anything else and they're like you now want the button to also pop or bounce or something like that. OK, we'll do a plus sign. We might as well go over here and say when you hover over it, the action will be um, start animation. We'll go for a tada one. We won't change anything else here. Again, remember, nothing's going to happen if you start hovering over it until you view it on a preview or an actual live website. Before we test it out, though, let's just click the interaction button again. So we're now viewing the actual button. Go to style, go to layout, scroll down until you get to miscellaneous and change the cursor. Let me just move my page for you. Change the cursor to be, uh, there it is, pointer. If you don't do that, you're just going to have like the line and people might not realize it's a button. Let's hit save on that now. Now we'll view it on the actual page, which we are here. So now when we move our mouse over it, we get the finger, we get the ta-da moment with it wobbling. Again, pick the animation that works for you best. And I now click it, we get this. And look, you go over here, you get the same kind of thing. So interactions and pop-ups are now here. And I can definitely see how we can create an off canvas pop up sliding menu mobile builder however you want to call it so i think this is pretty exciting times i'm imran web squadron like subscribe share and follow i'll see you never break always fight never quit do it right play the game win it life have no shame there's no time for the pain let the grind i could change in my mind pick a lane commit and climb the only way to win it life I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the back.